here is one of my favorite problems from this year's Amy one, which is problem number 10. For distinct complex numbers Z1, Z2, all the way to Z sub 673, you may realize right away that 673 times 3 is going to get us 2019. So that's one interesting feature right away. The polynomial, this polynomial, can be expressed as x to the 2019 plus 20x to the 2018 plus 19x to the 2017 plus g of x, where g of x is a polynomial with complex coefficient and with degree n must 2016. Right away, we see, as we may have expected, 2019 pop up because we have x cubed 673 times, getting us 2019, and from the looks of it, it looks like we don't really have to worry about g of x. The information we need to finish the problem is all contained within the first three highest degree terms. Anyway, let's read on. The value of this absolute value of z sub j times z sub k, where k is always greater than j, and they range between 1 and 673, can be expressed in the form m over n, where m and n are relatively prime positive integers, and we wish to find m plus n. So once we find this, we are done. One of the first things that you may ask is why is the answer not simply just 19? Because if you are acquainted with Vieta's formulas, especially, if we consider expanding x minus z1, x minus z2, x minus z3, as the coefficient, so we are going to get something x squared, as the coefficient of the third highest degree term, we are going to get z1, z2, plus z2, z3, plus z1, z3. Because the coefficient of x, in this case, is going to be z1, z2, x, plus z1, z3, x, plus z2, z3, x. So we are going to have this pairwise sum of the roots as the coefficient of x, and we are going to end with some constant. And just glancing at this formula, if we don't glance it too closely, looks like that's exactly what we want to do. The, the pairwise sum of the roots, which is contained in the third highest degree term, which should be 19? Well, we gotta look at our expression closely. We are not multiplying x minus z1, x minus z2, and x minus z sub 673. In that case, 19 would be correct. But we are multiplying x minus z1 cubed, x minus z2 cubed, and x minus z sub 673 cubed. All of the roots are triple roots. How is that changing anything, you may ask? Let's consider x minus z1 squared times x minus z2 or x minus z1, we have two of those, times x minus z2. If we consider the coefficient of x one more time, that's going to be z1 times z1 plus z1 times z2 plus z1 times z2. We have these z1s, we have z1 and z2, and we have another z1 and z2. And now we are confronted with two problems because we don't care about z1 times z1, for example. We want to make sure the subscripts are different. We want to make sure the roots are distinct. Also, notice that when we have these double roots or triple roots of multiplicity greater than 1, we have these z1, z2, and z1, z2 appearing more than once. And in our summation, we want to count them just once each. And those two complications is preventing the answer from simply being 19. That's a little bit disappointing. But now, by this point, I think we have a much better understanding of this problem. Specifically, I think we now really know what this 19 stands for. Well, this 19 is going to contain a bunch of z1 squared plus z2 squared all the way to z sub 673 squared, and it is going to contain the terms of the form z1, z2, and so on, such that they are distinct. And if you look at this closely, since we have a 3x minus z1s, the number of ways to get z1 squared are three of them, because we can pick these two, or these two, or these two. So there are 3 z1 squared, and similarly, we have 3 z sub i squared for any i. And how many ways are there of picking z1 times z2? 
there are three different ways of picking C1 and three different ways of picking C2. So there are nine of these each. And we see that this expression we have inside, let's call this S sub 1. We have our S sub 1 right here and we can call this part S sub 2. So once again, let's emphasize, we wish to find S sub 1 or more specifically, absolute value of S sub 1. So now that we understand 19, let's go to 20. What does 20 stand for? Well, as we can see from this example, the coefficient of the second highest degree term is going to be, so this part, is going to be negative z1 plus z2 plus z3. Because to get x squared, we gotta have a negative z1 and multiply two x's, or negative z2 and multiply two x's, or finally, have negative z3 and multiply two x's. So the coefficient is gonna be negative of the sum of the roots. Using the same reasoning, we know 20 is going to be the sum of every single root taking multiplicity into account. So we are going to have a z1 plus z1 plus z1 plus z2 plus z2 plus z2 and so on. So 20 is going to be, or negative of 20 I should say, so negative 20 is going to be 3 times z1 plus z2 plus all the way to z sub 673. Or that z1 plus z2 all the way to z 673 is negative 20 over 3. Now we have a variety of summations involving the roots of our function. So we have this one, this one, and finally this one. So how can we connect them in some sense? Or another way of asking that, what can we do to this number to get something similar to this or this? Well, easiest way is to square it. Because once we square this and square this side, we are going to get z1 squared plus z2 squared all the way to z sub 673 squared. And we are also going to get pairwise sum of the roots, each of them appearing twice. So 2 times z1, z2, z1, z3, all the way. And we know this is 400 divided by 9. And right away, we see that we have s sub 2 plus 2 times s sub 1. So go down a bit. 2 times s sub 1 is 400 over 9. And we already knew that 19 was 3 times s sub 2 plus 9 times s sub 1. So we already know then 19 is 3 times s sub 2 plus 9 times s sub 1. And from here, we want to find s sub 1. And that's easy enough. Just simply multiply this equation by 3 to get 3 times s sub 2 plus 6 times s sub 1 is 400 over 3. And subtract these two equations to get 3 times s sub 1. So we're focusing on these two. E is equal to 19 minus 400 over 3 or 57 minus 400, negative 343, divided by 3. That's telling us S sub 1, the value that we are looking for, is negative 343 divided by 9. So going all the way back up, we know our S sub 1 is negative 343 divided by 9, or this absolute value of S sub 1 is 343 divided by 9, hence m is 343, n is 9, so m plus n is going to be 352, and we are done.